Welcome to Samurai Gaiden, the educational web series where I, Richard Schaefer, talk about the stories and anecdotes of the men and women of Sengoku, Japan, and the events that shape their lives. All last month we talked about the Hogan Disturbance, the fight between Emperor Sutoku and Go Shirakawa, where Taira no Kiyomori first began his ascent to power. In that discussion we centered on the two sons of Minamoto no Tamayoshi, the first person to perform what eventually became seppuku, uh, Minamoto no Tametomo, and his elder brother who was the first to murder basically his entire family, Minamoto no Yoshitomo. Today we're going to talk about the brother's uncle, Minamoto no Yorimasa. The Hogan disturbance occurred in the year 1156, as we mentioned, and Minamoto no Yoshitomo's rebellion against Go Shirakawa and the Taira occurred four years later, in 1160, known as the Heiji Disturbance. As we mentioned, Yoshitomo died as a, as a result of the Heiji Disturbance. Uh, one prominent member of the Minamoto was a respected warrior, poet, and politician who had avoided the ebbing tides of the Minamoto clan. He was Minamoto no Yorimasa, who was personal friends with Taira no Kiyomori, and had managed to stay relatively neutral in the conflicts between his clan and the Taira. When Yoshitomo rebelled against the Taira favorite court, Yorimasa actually sided with the Taira. Yoshitomo's failure nearly ended the Minamoto clan's prosperity, allowing the Taira to completely take over the court and replace the Fujiwara as the dominant clan in power. In the year 1180, though, Kiyomori grew too powerful. He had married his daughter, Taira no Tokuko, to a former emperor, and they had born a young prince next in line for succession two years earlier. But Kiyomori was growing old. He had to ensure the Taira clan lived on in prosperity after his death. Kiyomori placed his grandson, the imperial prince, on the throne as two-year-old emperor Antoku. He then went about banishing his political rivals from the court and assigning positions to his relatives and allies. This was one step too far, as far as another member of the imperial family was concerned, former emperor Go Shirakawa himself. Go Shirakawa, who Kiyomori had backed during the Hogan disturbance, was now orchestrating a new rebellion against the Taira. Go Shirakawa sent his son, Prince Mochihito, to gather supporters from among the Minamoto. The downtrodden tend to befriend the other downtrodden. Prince Mochihito and Yorimasa gathered together and called upon the support of whatever Minamoto allies still remain. One of those major allies was the monks of the temple complex, known as Midera. When Kiyomori discovered Go Shirakawa's plans, he sent men to capture, and presumably murder, Mochihito. Mochihito fled to the Midera temple complex, but found their loyalties wavering. Midera was located at the base of Mount Hiei. Kiyomori had allied with the monks in nearby Enryakuji, and Midera found it difficult to get other monasteries to lend their support. The Minamoto forces weren't able to get into position to defend the temple in time, and so Yorimasa, Mochihito, and the Midera monks, loyal to their cause, fled the temple with Taira forces right behind them. They passed over the bridge across the Uji River and took up a position at the Byodo In Temple. Yorimasa led a combined force of Minamoto samurai and the Midera warrior monks in the defense of Byodo at the Uji River crossing. Taira no Kiyomori, too old to lead his own troops now, had sent two of his sons, Tomomori and Shigehira, to lead the Taira advance. They came upon the Uji River and found a poor scene. The monks of Midera had broken up the bridge, tearing the planks out so that the Taira forces could not cross it. Only a narrow beam remained in the center, which the Minamoto and Midera monks could protect easily. After some time of fierce fighting, the two Taira sons were beginning to consider going further down the river and crossing at the Seta Bridge instead of the Byodo In Bridge. But this would delay their crossing, giving Yorimasa and Mochihito a chance to escape to more numerous allies. Instead, one of the Taira captains took a force of 300 men across the river by fording it on horseback. When they reached the Minamoto side, there was little that could stop them. They attacked the bridge defenders from the flank, and the Taira forces were able to cross shortly thereafter. Now, Yorimasa's back was to the wall. He urged Prince Mochihito to flee, while the monks of Midera sacrificed themselves to protect the man whom they hoped would be the future emperor and their allies. Yorimasa had two sons evolved in battle, a Nakatsuna and a Kanatsuna, and together with his sons, he gathered up a small force and the prince. They departed the temple to flee to their friends in Nara, to the south. But as Yorimasa prepared to leave, he was struck by an arrow. Wounded, he knew he wouldn't be able to keep up with the fleeing de facto imperial guard. He urged the prince to keep going, and he retired to a small grove of trees to rest. 
The token forces that remained with him were quickly overrun by Tyra's soldiers. Yorimasa drew his war fan and dipped his finger in the blood of his wound. Upon the fan, he wrote the following words. Umoregi no hanasaku kotomo nakarishimi mi no naru hatezo kanashikari keru. Like a fossil tree from which we gather no flowers, sad has been my life, fated no fruit to produce. With that done, he pulled off his breastplate, drew his dagger, and sliced open his abdomen. A nearby retainer slashed at near Yorimasa and cut off his head. The retainer tied a heavy rock to Yorimasa's head and rushed to the river's edge, hurling the weight of his skull into the water. It was one trophy that Tyra would not be getting this day. During this time, his younger son, Minamoto no Kanetsuna, was struck by an arrow in the head and died. The elder son, Minamoto no Nakatsuna, was also wounded by an arrow, but only maimed. Nakatsuna limped over to his father's headless corpse, dropped to his knees, drew forth his own dagger. Minamoto no Yorimasa was not the first to commit seppuku, nor was he certainly the last, but he created a template for which all other samurai would look up to, when, and if forced, to perform seppuku.